If you're feeling like your entire business is a chaotic mess, it's probably because this is happening. You've got yourself or your team sitting over here knowing exactly what needs to get done. You've got these emails that need to be sent. You've got these orders that need to be packaged and shipped. You've got these customers that need to be made happy. You know what your team needs to accomplish in order for your business to grow, sustain, have happy customers, and continue to do what it does best, right? But the problem I bet you are facing and the thing that has you ripping your hair out is because the path to this destination does not feel like what I just drew. Instead, you find your team kind of taking these side tangents of making mistakes or miscommunicating or pointing fingers, thinking one person's gonna do it and in fact, the other person's supposed to do it. All of this is what's happening when in your mind and your team's mind, you all know that this is the path you actually want. The good news is getting to this path, this fast track to getting things done without mistakes and errors and chaos and confusion, it is possible. And I've spent the last six years working with hundreds of clients to make this possible for their small team. In fact, the transformation to get rid of all of these mistakes and frustrations come down to six simple steps that I'm gonna be going through in this video. Stay at the end and I'll break down why these feelings that you're stuck in right now are actually a symptom of a very good problem to have. But let's get started with step number one to get out of this mess. Step number one is find the biggest fire. Look at all of the things that are going wrong in the business right now. All of the different areas where you find your team making mistakes, getting confused, having miscommunication, wasting time, and try to identify maybe by listing on a piece of paper what those things are. When creating this list, I want you to focus on recurring patterns of behavior or areas where things go wrong. So for example, rather than listing off every single email where there was a typo from your newsletter, you could just write your newsletter quality assurance or your newsletter proofing is not so good. List off each of these areas on a piece of paper. Got it? Good. Once you have that piece of paper, I want you to look at it again and figure out which of these mistakes that happen are most costly. And some of your mistakes will have financial costs, some will be reputational, some will be energy-based, some will be stress-based. They'll all have different costs. But I want you to review all of those items that you've recorded as mistakes or issue areas and find the one that feels the biggest, the baddest, the most, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. It was so consequential to you. I want you to find that. The fires you have on your list and how you rank them is gonna differ from business to business. For a software company, it might be how you prioritize what development gets done in a given week. For a marketing company, it might be how you proof check and confirm content is correct before it goes out. For a company that works in services, it might be how you deliver your customer value, your service or your product. Whatever the core thing is you do, if there are common mistakes and errors around that that have a high cost, those are typically the ones you're going to want to prioritize first because they have the biggest cost. Whatever that is for you, go ahead and circle that on your list and we're going to move on to step two. Step two, focused in on just your biggest fire. I want you to start going to a whiteboard or again on a piece of paper and start recording what currently happens when that thing occurs. So flipping over here to the whiteboard, let's say this is our simple process for how we fulfill trophy orders for our business because let's just say that is the process that's causing me the most pain. I'm going to write out what actually happens when we do that right now. So without using any fancy diagramming software, I'm just going to write down that we have an order order form with trophy information. We get the design done. So we'll create whatever it is, the InDesign file of the actual trophy label. We print out or engrave or whatever it might be that trophy. We then assemble the trophy using parts in our inventory. We have the client pick up that trophy and here's the part that's painful. Then the client finds the mistake. That is our goal here to write down what is actually happening, even if it's not what we want to have happen. One thing to note about this simple flowchart before you start implementing this for yourself is how simple this is. I want you, especially if you were a small team, like one of the 1800 clients I've walked through exercises like this, I want to make sure that you don't overcomplicate it. Yes, there are software and strategies for how to process map. We actually talk about them more in this video here. But for today, you don't need to get ninja. Get whatever is most uh, comfortable for you, what is the easiest to get things out of your head, and use that method, for me it's a whiteboard, to start capturing how things actually work. A good starter timeline for this step is about 10 minutes 
per person involved. So if you're mapping this process by yourself, give yourself 10 minutes max. If you're mapping it with a friend, 10 minutes each for a total of 20 minutes. You can continue expanding this, but if you have more than say eight people in the room, you might want to break into smaller groups. You can always come back to this and refine it later on. We get to step three and four and so on. But for now, just get it out of your head. Got it? Good. All right. So in step two, you created a map of how things are currently working. A business process analyst might call that an as is process map. Don't let the jargon fool you. You just captured what is actually happening. Now you're ready for the third step, which I like to call measure what you hate. Measure what you hate is about attaching metrics to this process that is currently happening. We want to try to find some kind of unit of measure that captures why is this process so frustrating to you? What is something that we can count, tally, observe, see, smell, taste, I guess any of those work too, that lets you know that that process you just mapped is not working? We have a whole video that goes over metrics up here, but some example ones to get you through this step would be something like the number of mistakes that happen the number of customer support tickets, the number of hours it takes you to accomplish the thing, the number of sprint points it takes you to accomplish something, the time it takes from start to finish for a task to be done. All of these things can capture a area of frustration for you. Now that's it for step three. But before we move on to step four, I want to give you a little nerdy nugget to dive deeper on this data step if this is something that's resonating with you. In the business process management space, which is technically what all this stuff is considered, if you want to be fancy, there is a concept called business process mining. Business process mining is essentially doing what you're doing in this step, but using richer and richer sources of data. Rather than just looking at the number of hours tracked, for example, you could check the number of clicks someone has to do, the number of tabs someone has to have open. You can get way more intense depending on the types of tools you have in your business to help you monitor things. Most of us smaller businesses are not nearly as creepy as the Fortune 100, and so we do not have as much data data here to mine. But here at Process Driven, we've been teaching a framework called Process Driven Foundations for years. We work with hundreds, now thousands of teams to help them organize how their processes work. If you want richer reporting into the strengths and weaknesses of key areas of your business and you want it directly inside your work management software, you might want to consider working with us in Foundations because this is one of the things we do with our clients every single time we work with them. So check out the info in the description below and let's get on to step number four. Now for step number four, we want to look at all of the stuff we've already gathered and figure out the easiest way to make things the most easier. Does that make sense? That was a lot of words. We basically are looking for the low hanging fruit, the little tweaks we can make that has a huge impact on fundamentally changing how this process works and improving that metric you picked out in the last step. While protecting the parts of the process that are working really well, you want to figure out how could we fix this situation while making the smallest change possible. Oftentimes, this change is already something you or your team knows would help. You just have never made the time to fix it. Um, if you don't think you have a solution in mind, ask your team because I bet you they already know exactly what will fix it. But just in case your team has absolutely no ideas on how to make this better, which I doubt, uh, we do have a video up above with some tried and true strategies you can use to improve any process if you find yourself stuck. A common mistake that is often fixed in situations like this is around quality assurance. In other words, finding mistakes and fixing them. Like many new processes, this one that we have up on the screen has the quality assurance step happening by the clients. They are the person checking for quality. And that is usually a good sign that you can easily tweak this process to make the customer happier by making sure mistake fixing is not on their plate. Is it going to be perfect? Probably not, but you can certainly do better. One thing we could do here is before we go to the print step of our process, we can have a proofing check. Now, in case you can't read my chicken scratch, that means design, proof, revise, and then print. So we're just adding in this quality assurance step into our process to ensure that our client isn't unofficially our quality assurance tester down the line. Now, I'm guessing at this point you're thinking, review and revise, poof, that's so simple. I would never make that mistake in our process. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna bet on that? These kinds of simple errors 
oftentimes are known by you and your team, but either are not practiced or have just never been implemented. And they're way more common than you think. The good news is because they're so simple, fixing this problem in your business is also so simple. Now, if you are not part of the 97% of businesses that have simple things that are really holding them back, maybe you really have a situation that you're stumped on how to fix. And none of the methods that we talk about in this video will help you. Well, in that case, we've got one more, you know, big gun you can pull out to help solve the issue. And that is your other people, your mastermind group, your employees, your contractors, people who are in your circle, gather them together and solicit feedback. Have them try to help you. More brains trying to solve this problem will generally generate more better ideas. It'll just slow down your overall progress in this step. So I would only broaden this group if you are absolutely stumped with your core team or yourself or whoever's you know initially involved with this. If you don't have an obvious answer, then broaden the group little by little until you find that magic bullet. Speaking of bullets, I this is a very violent episode. Step five is called kill your darlings, which yeah. Um, step five is about taking all of the ideas you generate in step four, which might be review and revise. It might be, you know, use chat GPT because of course we need to use that for everything. All those ideas you've produced we need to pick which ones are really going to make the biggest difference. If you have so many fantastic ideas, you can't possibly decide which is going to make the biggest difference. Ranking them on a chart like this can really help. Grab each of your sticky notes or pieces of paper or ideas and rank them based on how impactful they're going to be. Very impactful, not impactful at all. And then how easy are they? Very easy, not easy at all. The things that are high impact and very easy to do, put them there. Things that are low impact and difficult to do, put them there and fill in your chart until every one of your ideas is ranked. When you're done, you might have a layout that looks something like this and everything that's very impactful and very easy to do is typically where you want to start your journey, which brings me to the next step. Once we're in step six, you need to turn your brain off. <laughs> Well, not really, but you need to turn your decision making brain off because in step six, I want you to lock down which of the ideas that you outlined in step five, you're actually going to make happen. In a perfect world, you have just one super impactful, super easy thing that you can switch, such as a review and revise step. In some situations, you might have quite a few little things you want to do all together. Whatever the scope is of what you want to accomplish, keep it small, keep it impactful, and keep it easy on this first go. And I know, I know, I know, the perfectionist in you might be saying, But Layla, I want to fix all of the things that are wrong. I get it. But for this first round, you don't have time, right? Everything's chaotic. That's why you're watching this video. And so I don't want you to do things that don't make a huge difference yet. Because you're already maxed out in your time and energy, we need to push ourselves just a little bit to do a few changes that will buy us back some time and stress. We'll make things significantly better. That'll give us some buffer in our day and our life. And we can use that extra time we free up to do a few more improvements later on. But right now, the last thing I want you to do is add a long to-do list of process improvements you can make when you have no time to even breathe as it is. And I should probably acknowledge here the stress, the lack of time, all of these things that I'm expressing in this video that you might be feeling your team is probably feeling this as well, unless they're complete assholes and they're like, yeah, our business is a mess. I love it. You know, <laughs> for most people, they are also feeling bad. They're also feeling stressed. They're also feeling like, gosh, how do we keep messing up for our clients? And so there is going to be probably a, a culture of fatigue around you, whether it's you and a contractor or you and a, a staff. That is why it's really important that we make the scope of this step six here very small, very achievable. We need to build the momentum. And if we make some kind of ridiculous goal, like we're going to change everything about how we do trophies, we increase the risk that we might not be able to achieve that goal. And that could cause even more harm, even more stress, even more work, even more overdues. So we want to make a small goal that we can achieve and then keep moving forward, keep building on it. As I sit here recording this, I really feel like this whole concept of change and getting buy-in and getting your team to support something that's new and scary is kind of like a whole other video. If you'd like to see a video on that, uh, just write the word change in the comments below. Maybe we'll make a part two. Now we're at bonus step number seven. 
which is where you can now go back to step one and repeat this, this coping exercise almost as often as you need to, to bring more and more calm into how the business is running. Because look, the definition of stress is someone feeling immense pressure that they don't know what to do with. That's why when your team is here, the outcome you need is here, and things aren't going to plan, it feels overwhelming and scary and stressful because you have so much pressure to get people to that result, but you don't know how to corral folks back to this place of being able to really accomplish what you've set out to do. But now, with this video, with these six steps we've gone through, that's no longer the case. You no longer need to just feel pressure that gives you no direction. You have direction. You have six steps you can go through again and again and again to start focusing and focusing and perfecting and perfecting and reducing mistakes and inefficiencies and making things better. This transformation of taking this kind of aimless pressure and stress from not feeling like you know what to do, things just aren't working, and transforming that into focused direction, driving you towards the next improvement to make things better. It's like taking stress and turning it into a combustion engine. It's what people will call business process management. And if I had started this video saying, you're gonna learn business process management today, I'm sure you would have clicked off thinking, "Ugh, gosh, I don't need to know about that. But now that we're friends and all, I figure I'll let you in on the secret because you know now how this can help you constructively move forward without blowing everything up and restarting all over again. Which brings me back full circle to what I said at the start of this video. Even though it might not feel good right now, that things aren't quite going to plan. It's actually a really good thing that you're here because the only reason that your processes aren't working, that you're feeling the sense of chaos and pressure is because you care and people care enough about what you're doing and what you could provide to expect more from you. If no one cared about what you were building, if no clients cared about getting their offers from you, they were gonna go to a million other people, you wouldn't feel this pressure. If you didn't know you were capable of more, that you want to grow, that you're ready for the next step, you wouldn't feel this pressure. So as crummy as it feels right now to feel like, ah, we're not quite there to where we need to be to grow, to scale, to get to the next benchmark, the fact that you're feeling this is a sign of progress to come. And it's something that many people who are further behind you in their journey are envious of. But here's where I need to share some not so good news. Yes, you're feeling all of this pressure because you have outgrown the processes that got you here. Congratulations. But I don't think you're done growing yet. I don't think you're done improving yet. Right? Right. So because of that, all of these challenges you're feeling right now, even though you will fix them when you follow these six steps, they're going to come back. Maybe in a few months, maybe in a year. But if you grow as fast as I think you're going to grow, probably sooner. This kind of cycle of outgrowing your processes, shedding that layer and rebuilding is just going to happen. But if you want to have these cycles feel less painful and less like they do right now, the thing we need to transition to is from business process management, which is exactly what we've been covering in this video, even though you might have not known the name, to instead business process strategy, thinking proactively, planning ahead anticipating when we're going to outgrow things, anticipating when mistakes are going to start bothering us and fixing things proactively. If you're looking to make this transition from process management to process strategy to really build operations that will grow as your business does without having to feel the way you might be feeling now, that's what we cover inside the Process Driven Foundations Accelerator program that we run here at Process Driven. We've been running the program for years. We work with uh, 1,842 small teams like yours probably more by the time you watch this video. And with every client, what we're doing is helping them start to work proactively on organizing their business so that they don't have to hit this kind of rock bottom feeling that you might be feeling right now, but to instead build systems, build processes, build out preventative measures that allow the business to run more smoothly, more calmly, and to be able to proactively anticipate challenges as you continue to grow. You can check out our website for some of the stories of the clients we have helped so far. But one story I want to leave with you, whether you decide to work with us here at Process Driven or DIY your journey ahead, is this one from Danielle. She shares, I'm feeling that I can finally, finally grow my business beyond me without having to worry that we'll lose clients or affect our reputation because things get lost in the sauce. That is what can happen when you start taking this stuff seriously. When you give yourself permission to invest a little bit of time now to save a lot of time 
and reputational damage in the future. To learn more about the experience that Danielle went through in our foundations program, check out the link in the description below. If you want to keep DIYing the journey because you're not quite sure, hmm, our prosty is really something I need, uh, go ahead and check out this video here on the end screen next. It will help you start identifying whether process failures might actually be sneaking into your business without you realizing it. And even if sometimes you don't feel like it, consider this your reminder to enjoy the process.